Hey, second grade, get those cupcakes ready because we're going to color those in together. But first, let's watch some interviews with the artist, Wayne Tebow. This, for you, is my world to look at. Isn't that great? My name's Wayne Tebow. I'm an old art teacher and painter. Paintings are inert, still, quiet, but painters found a way to bring it to life. Great works from memory, from imagination. His name is Wayne Tebow, and if you missed the retrospective of his work some months ago, don't worry, we've arranged this special showing. They say you should never start a meal with dessert, but you can use cake to launch an art career. 40 years ago, when painter Wayne Tebow looked at the swirling frosting on a shop counter, he couldn't help but see gooey gobs of oil paint. Do you like the way that he used so much paint that it looks almost like realizing? Not long ago, the Whitney Museum in New York looked a bit like a bakery window. On display, a retrospective of Wayne Tebow's remarkable career, featuring his now legendary menu of cakes and pies. You could have picked anything, and you picked <laughs> pie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I really don't know. I uh, painted these eight or 10 pies on plates and thought, well, that's no one's going to take me seriously now, but I couldn't leave it alone. His voluptuous oils look like buttercream on canvas. You don't just want to look at his pictures, one critic said. You want to lick them. I want some. You take a lemon meringue pie. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's quite a beautiful thing, a piece of lemon meringue. It's more than just a subject. It's also a kind of... Uh, relationship to the paint itself, mm -hmm. where you really feel like you're sort of making the meringue and touching the cake or working with the pie. At 81, Wayne Tebow is still going strong. And it's not just desserts on his plate or his palate, cakes and pies that have become the artist's calling card. You see, Wayne Tebow was anything but an overnight success. A cartoonist and drawing instructor in the Army after World War II, Tebow went home to California to teach and to paint. But the serious minds of the art business had a hard time with his whimsical subjects. And one gallery owner told Tebow point blank. He said, let me tell you something, Mr. Thibro. And I said, yes. He said, you are not Picasso. <laughs> I said, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> when people look at your pictures, what do you want them to see? I'd like for them to laugh a little. If we don't have a sense of humor, we lack a sense of perspective. His work is about celebrating the joy of living. I always feel uplifted when I see his work. I mean, I just, it makes me feel good. If, if it does that, man, that's, that's enough. Okay, so let's get these colored. I'm going to use crayons because we are going to change the pressure uh, again like we did in our Picasso portraits, but just doing this a little bit differently so that you can see how you properly use um, the pressure to create not just an abstract drawing, but also how to use light to make it seem like this is a 3D drawing. So that being said, crayons or colored pencils would uh, most likely be the best things to use for this. Project. If you don't have those, you can just do this all with just one pencil. Okay, the first thing you're going to start with is the wrapper. All the way to the right, the first three slots that you see, I want you to color in as hard as you can press on your crayon. So the first three, as hard as you can press on your crayon. Okay, so what we're trying to do here is if the light is coming from this direction, 
everything that's going to the left is going to be much lighter. So the next three, you're going to press kind of medium on these pieces. A little bit lighter than the one that you just did, but not the lightest pressure. So you're going to press kind of medium on the next three. Make sure that you can see a difference between this and the one that you just did, the, the darkest ones. Okay, so I, I'm sure you've got the idea now. We're going to go for our last three, which are the lightest. Now, you may not have the same amount of lines that I have, but you've got the idea. Pick up your crayon as you move to the left. So you start really dark, and then you go lighter, 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 until you can't um, barely see the last one. You want to make sure that there's color. It's kind of like how we did our value scales while we were in school. Okay, now that that is finished, we're going to start with the icing on the cupcake. Okay, from here, you're going to take your color, and you're going to, again, so we're trying to get this so that the light looks like it's coming and hitting it from the left. And you're going to go according to how dark and light you've gone on the bottom so that it kind of looks the same. So all the way on the right, you're going to color and press as hard as you can. And then as you get towards the medium side, you're going to lift up your crayon. But what's really important here is that it's not blocks of color. So you're going to kind of just lift up as you are coloring. You're not going to see a line in the difference between the two colors. And then the same going all the way to the left, which is going to get much lighter. You're going to lift up your crayon. Make sure that there's a difference. Lift up your crayon all the way to the left. Lighter, lighter, lighter as you go. Okay, you're going to do the same thing now for the rest of the layers of the icing. Make sure that you're matching the darkness to the lightness. You don't want it to be super dark all the way to the middle if it's not that way underneath. You want to make sure that they match. So it's dark where it's dark underneath. It's light where it's light underneath. I'm going to continue to do that throughout the whole thing of icing. Okay, now it's time to do your extras and your background. Color in all of your extras first. If you've got a cherry or if you've got other things inside your picture, make sure everything that's on the left is super light and everything that's on the right is dark and everything in the middle is kind of in the middle. Um, make sure that you're pressing hard on your crayons in the dark spots and really light in the light parts. Okay, the last thing that we need to complete now is our uh, table and the background. So if a light is coming from the left, remember when we looked at objects in school, and if the light is coming to the left, the shadow goes on the other side. So we're going to put a little bit underneath. You're going to press really hard on whatever color you're coloring your bottom, and you're going to press um, really hard to make this what's called a cast shadow. So you're going to put a little bit underneath, and then... As it goes towards the outside, it gets a little bit lighter. So it's really dark underneath and on the side of the cupcake, and then it gets lighter as it goes towards the side of the paper. This is because the shadow, the light is being blocked by the cupcake. So what's closest to the cupcake is going to be darkest. Then I'm just going to now fill in the rest of this table, and I'm just going to press lightly on this to fill in the rest of my table. All right, so the last thing we have to do is the background, which is what's around the cupcake. So I'm going to pick a light green. Again, on the side that is furthest from where the light would be is going to be dark. And then on the side, which is on the left side, like we did everything else, it's going to be the lightest. So on the right side, you're going to press pretty hard and make sure that that whole area is covered. And then on the left side, you're going to make it kind of light, much lighter. So you're going to press less, much lighter on that crayon once you get to the other side. Okay, doesn't it look like a light is shining onto this beautiful cupcake? I can't wait to see what yours looks like, but please make sure that you remember to color in your backgrounds. When you color in a background, it makes the, the art project or the artwork complete, and that's a very important part. So the cupcake isn't just the subject and important, the background is also very important. 
Of course, as always, once you're finished, please take a picture and upload it to the Google Classroom so that I can mark it as complete and give you a grade. I hope you guys have a great week. Enjoy coloring these.